Welcome back to the channel. So we got our predicted lines out today for the Edmonton Oilers against the Chicago Blackhawks. But first, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Let's get going. As these are the lines Bob Stoffer tweeted out. We have James Neal on the first line with McDavid and Annis. I liked how Neal played against the Stars. He had his chances. Didn't capitalize. But... There was some positive in his game. Hard forechecking. He had some couple hits too. One big one in the offensive zone on the forecheck was nice. So that probably got him the bump up to McDavid's line with Tyler Ennis. And the acquisition of Tyler Ennis for a fifth round draft pick for him to become our fourth leading scorer. You got to take it. Like he's played with McDavid every game since. And you could see there's some chemistry brewing. There's keep them playing till the end of the season. When we hit the playoffs, they will have more chemistry. That's how it goes. Second line, you know, you got to keep the dry side of Yamamoto, Nugent Hopkins line together. They've been stellar since the 31st of December. Keep them together. Hopkins has really stepped up. And Drysaddle's leading that line. And it's not a same player either. If you kind of look, Drysaddle's 6'2". Hopkins is 6'4". And then Yamamoto's 5'8". And on that line, Yamamoto's the one in there for checking and getting the puck to Drysaddle and Hopkins. And they're doing their thing just like Drysaddle and McDavid can do. So Yamamoto's a key addition to that. Now our third line, I kind of thought Anthony Nisu would be there and stuff. But nope, we got Archibald Sheehan back together. That's probably the best option. They play together on the penalty kill, play them five on five. There's a lot of chemistry there between those two. And of course you had Zach Kazian, who signed that three year con or four year, three or four year contract extension. I can't remember off the top of my head drawing blank. Good hard hitting four checking line that can sustain that pressure in the offensive zone, get the cycle going. And we all know Kazian and Archibald can score, and Sheehan can set those guys up. And Archibald has 11 goals or something this season, which is good. I think he had 13 last year. He did start really slow this season, but started heating up. And of course, you got the newly acquired double A there. I call him Double A. It's a lot easier than saying his name. With centered by Kara on the right wing, you got Chase on. I really, I have my thoughts about Kara. He's and Chase on. They both have one more year after this year, but in reality, Kara's good on the penalty kill. Give him credit with that. With Nugent Hopkins, he's really good. 5-on-5, five five, he just hasn't been there the last few years. And then Chase on. Good penalty or power play guy that gets get in front of the net score like he's been doing this year. But I know Hawes hasn't done much. But he, I would give Hawes a chance over Kara any day. I think Kara should have been gone at the deadline there. That's just my opinion, because we do have Benson, McLeod, Lavoy. All those guys are going to be up. And I won't be surprised if Benson and Lavoy actually make this Edmonton Oilers team next year, unless the salary cap goes up to $7 million like they're projecting, between 4 or whatever, and $7 million, and they bring in a couple of decent guys, and Benson and Lavoy's chances go far down. So, that is the forwards. And when I did my video earlier, I had the lines right. It will be Nurse and Bear, Jones, Larson, Chris Russell, and Matt Benning. I got Russell and Benning on the wrong side here. My bad. Uh, news on Clefbaum. He was on the ice today. He's not going tonight, but he's close. I read an article... Don't be surprised if Clefbaum is back in the lineup on Saturday versus the Columbus Blue Jackets. And to the comment from Robert Bartel there, he has a 
terrific point. Bring take Jones out, put Clefbaum in. As much as Jones has been doing really good this year, he's had some mistakes and Clefbaum's had mistakes too, but this team is good when everyone's healthy and when Mike Green comes back for the playoffs. Where does Mike Green fit in? I'm not too sure. I'm going to look into that and do another video on that. And he also did point out as well. Sorry, the girlfriend's texting me there. He did point out as well. The Oilers? I don't have the numbers for Sackley. The numbers point when Benning is in the lineup, Oilers win a lot more. When Yamamoto's in the lineup, they win a lot more. I know the reason for Yamamoto is because with him in the lineup, we're like 1.14 goals for better per game than we are with him out of the lineup. It's proven that. And then Benning's just... Benny might not be that guy that shines like you don't notice him, but he's doing all the little things that equal out to that big thing that everyone else is doing. And honestly, I've been a fan of Matt Benning for a long time. Be weird, or it be, what am I trying to say here? I don't know what's going to happen with him because I believe he's in his final year of his contract. Don't get me wrong, or don't quote me on that. But I believe he is on the final year of his contract. But I think he's an RFA. So with Russell and Larson's contracts coming to the end in the next few years, do we see Matt Benning staying or do we see Chris Russell or Adam Larson back? That is going to be huge. But this is for the lineups tonight, and that's a solid decor right there. I like how Jones and Larson kind of have chemistry going, and Baron Nurse just had chemistry going since the start. And then you go to the goalies, and our starter, of course, Mike Smith, unbelievable in this new year, 2020. Can't complain. He's been in it just like Koskinen, and we have a one-two punch. And I was asked the other day, when I was talking to my buddy, he's a San Jose fan, of course. You can boo him all you want. He's like, why didn't they go to get another goaltender? And I said, because look at the numbers from December 27th, I believe it was, for Mike Smith and January 1st for Miko Koskin. And he's like, what? They have won us more games than lost combined. And he's like, well... Robin Leonard would be a good addition. Well, yeah. Don't get me wrong. Leonard's a good goalie. But you don't mess up what you have going. And with the pieces that Edmonton brought in. As Ennis in double A. That was just to get guys out of the lineup like Benson. He, he shined at parts. He's still young. And then like Patrick Russell and Kobe Cave. That was just upgrades, and those guys weren't doing much for us. So that's what I told him, and he kind of agreed. But you know, those San Jose Sharks fans, they think they're all high praise because who knows why. So anyway, that's the video. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. I'll catch you guys on the next one.